Where are the top three Shark Tank companies where all five sharks made an investment on? Did these businesses fulfill their potential? And are they even still up and running? Let's find out. Hello Sharks, my name is Charles Michael Yim and I'm the founder and CEO of Prothometer. First, we have the Breathometer. It's a device that functions as a breathalyzer, but with a more specific approach. You see, this breathalyzer is a portable device that was designed to measure the blood alcohol content from just the breath of the person. At least that's what it was pitched to be. The compact device works with a mobile app to display the BAC reading so as to give users an estimate of their intoxication level. It can also be connected to a smartphone through Bluetooth, and it has the use of a headphone jack as an alternative. All users have to do is download the app, connect the breathalyzer device to their phone, and blow into it to get that BAC level taken in a matter of seconds. Charles Michael Yim founded this device and essentially the entire company late in 2012 to create the first portable breath analysis program. Yim's a graduate of the University of California with a Bachelor's of Science in Business Economics, Stanford Graduate School of Business, and is a lifelong entrepreneur. Yim hoped that his device would be able to help people make more informed decisions about their alcohol consumption and avoid the dangers of driving under the influence. And as it turns out, the Shark Tank wasn't his first option to generate capital for the breathometer device. Charles initially launched his idea in a crowdfunding campaign on Indiegogo back in April 2013, hoping to raise a target amount of 25000 But guess what? By the closing of the campaign, Charles's breathalyzer idea had raised about 138000 definitely enough to get the production going. So Charles and the team set out to do just that. Eventually, they would give away early beta trials at the SXSW Music Festival in Austin, Texas some months later. But he still needed more financing to widen his reach and maximize sales, hence his appearance in the tank. Appearing on the second episode of Season 5 in April 2014, Charles Yim walked into the tank and presented his product to the Sharks. He announced he was looking for a sum of $250,000 for 10% equity in the Breathometer Company. I'm asking for $250,000 for 10% equity stake in my company. Illustrating the use of this tiny device by serving the Sharks some champagne, Yim revealed that his product could also estimate the time it'll take to sober up from the BAC readings and, if need be, even hail a cab to avoid having to drive while drunk. Now that's one way to start a pitch. He continued telling the Sharks about the price of selling this device, which is $49.99. And then he revealed that he had not only raised nearly 140000 in revenue through Indiegogo, but also sold about 4,000 devices within 30 days of the campaign. He further explained that he had invested $50,000 of his own money to get the company started, and later raised 500000 from angel investors. We know what you're thinking. He already raised so much, why even come to the Sharks for more? Turns out, Charles's plan was to put 100% of the investment into manufacturing. As soon as Lori Greiner went up to try the device herself, Mark Cuban shockingly went all in with an offer of half a million in exchange for 20% of the company. Should I come up and try this with you? You're at a point zero four right now. That would be legal. And immediately, Kevin O'Leary made a counteroffer and offered Charles's original demand of 250000 but this time for 15%. This dude already had more offers than many others in just the first few minutes of his pitch. Rather than jump on the offer immediately, Charles decided to cut to the chase and told the Sharks that his actual goal was to raise $1 million within 60 days. So just to open up the, 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 the funding channel of communications, I'm more than willing to open up the round, potentially involve more than just one Shark, because I think there's an incredible amount of value here. Yet again, he got an offer immediately, with Kevin proposing that Charles accept the Sharks going in for the full million only for Mark Cuban to disagree and stand against having to collaborate with any other shark. Kevin, Laurie, and Robert Herjavec then put their own offer, worth $750,000 for a 30% stake, which is technically the same rate Charles Yim came looking for. But our negotiations didn't end here. Instead, Damon tabled his own offer, a solitary investment of $250,000 in exchange for 10% equity. If you recall, that's exactly what he was looking for when he came into the tank. Before he could give his answer, the Sharks had a bit of back and forth, and then finally concluded to all invest in the breathometer with a total sum of a million dollars in exchange for 30% equity. One million dollars, 500,000 from Mark Cuban for 15%, and 500,000 from the rest of the sharks, we're gonna split it right. for a total of 30% 
for $1 million. Half of the sum came from Cuban for 15% and the remaining from the other four, putting up $125,000 each for the other 15% equity split. And just like during his Indiegogo campaign, he walked out with even more than he came in looking for. And for the early stages, it was the perfect Shark Tank story. Breathometer recorded over $30 million in sales, and by 2015, business was booming. It wasn't a happily ever after kind of story though, because in 2017, the FTC charged the company for making false claims concerning the device's accuracy. It turned out that the breathometer was in fact not giving accurate measurements, frequently underreported BAC levels, and knowingly made false marketing claims of accuracy. Yim and the entire breathometer company were ordered to cease production, as the FTC alleged that the product's incompetence was due to a lack of accurate tests and scientific evidence prior to launch. The company was also ordered to refund customers who had purchased the devices, which meant returning over $5 million for sales of the original and Breeze. The FTC also demanded customers be notified about the settlement and refund process, so people could outrightly stop using the device. Despite having to take down the Breathometer app, the company switched to producing a device that measures oral health and hydration levels called Mint. But as you'd expect, this product didn't quite take off, and eventually, the company shut down completely. Founder Charles Yim has continued in his venture capitalism and is reported to have raised over a billion for startup investments. He currently works out of San Francisco with his firm Sync VC and is an executive member of a number of startups, including Vitable and Cohabit Labs Incorporated. Charles serves as a board member and advisor for most of the startups he had been involved with and does some guest speaking and business mentoring. More recently, in May 2021, he published and released a book about entrepreneurship. It's fair to say he's doing all right for himself. Even though the breathometer company didn't work out, we're pretty sure Mark Cuban hasn't forgiven Charles for wasting half a million of his investment though, because he recently called the breathometer the worst execution in the history of the Shark Tank and faulted Charles Yim's mismanagement of funds. But it's not every time the sharks get it wrong, like this next product from the fifth episode of season seven, the product name x Crack. This product in question was drone technology combining a helicopter hovering capability with an aircraft speed, all with a way smaller size and remotely controllable. The founders, J.D. Claridge and Charles Manning, are aerospace engineers and software developers respectively. Together they founded the X-Craft company back in 2014. After building a mutual connection based on their joint interest in both aviation and business, with Charles serving as the director of the company and JD as the CEO, the two noticed the development and growth of the drone business and decided to figure out ways to incorporate the idea into their daily lives. The duo then developed the X Plus One as the first drone and hoped to put it out on the market, but lack of funds limited this plan. So they would seek out funds, first by joining Kickstarter to acquire the finances for mass production and distribution. And the campaign turned out to be a huge success as they generated over triple of their original target value of 50,000. But for a project like drone manufacturing, they needed way more than that. And what's better than to get on the tank and look for large scale investors? So the duo would go into this tank, pitching their drones, doing it in the grandest way possible. Charles and JD came flying the X Plus One drone into the area ahead of them, a drone with the ability to change into a plane. And that's not all. These drones could go quite the distance on just a single battery, switching between modes mid-flight, maybe taking photographs of moving objects, and even be programmed to take a precise flight route. Showing off such a utility drone, the duo announced to the Sharks that they were seeking a half a million dollar investment in exchange for 20% stake in X-Craft. We're looking to seek $500,000 in exchange for 20% of the company. Damon and Robert weren't quite sold at first, so the partners proceeded to explain the special flight alternatives and the range of their drones. After that, the Sharks inquired about the profitability of the product. JD spoke up about their Kickstarter campaign and the additional 30,000 in pre-sales the product has earned. Robert wasn't quite sold yet, so he questioned the intended market of the X-Craft, which Charles had an answer for too. Now the sharks are wondering why they came on the show in the first place. The X-Craft seemed way too flawless, so flawless that they might not even need the sharks to invest. JD answered this for me. Where's the secret sauce in your company? Like, tell me what 
somebody can't knock off. JD would explain that they would need to raise funds from the Sharks since they needed half of whatever was raised to expand production to cut costs, and the other half would be to complete phone drone development. Okay, well look, but what I've, value I've, out are you I've heard for? enough. I'd like yeah, to make it off. I'd like to start things out here. I'm going to give you 750000 for 25%. Kevin O'Leary showed the first interest by offering $750,000 for 25% stake, and Damon would follow suit with an offer of his own, $1 million for 25%. Next thing you know, shark battle. Kevin matches Damon's offer, Lori counters with the same amount for 20%, and the next thing Charles and JD know is that their company's value has more than quadrupled in a matter of seconds. Damon expresses his doubts, but still added another million to the previous highest offer, putting the company value cap at six million. Next up, Kevin announced that he wasn't interested in XCraft for anything less than 5% equity. For Mark, he was initially reluctant to put up 300,000 for a 5% stake, but eventually Eventually budged after the two founders were able to ace his questions. I think that ceiling for me is 5%. I gotta have 5% minimum. So let me ask you a qualifying question. Is there any one of you that is not interested in participating? Or I'm interested. I think it'd be good. Let's step out. chat. Okay. All right. A quiet talk in the hallway followed eventually leading to JD and Charles's return, willing to accept the offer as it was. A deal from all five sharks, each agreeing to put up 300000 in exchange for 5% of X-Craft, making the total deal worth $1.5 million for 25%. With Kevin having predicted that these two business partners would control this market, they left the tank satisfied with how much they were able to raise. Surprisingly enough, the deal with the Sharks never went through. As it turns out, getting a deal on the show is a bit more complex in the background, and involves the legal process of setting terms and opening their books. In fact, according to Forbes, only 50% of the deals agreed on the show ended up going through all the way. X-Craft didn't quite get past these stages, so the duo didn't get the agreed 1.5 mil. But guess what? That didn't stop the two from getting their startup off the ground. The Sharks gave them incredible publicity and even resulted in their website crashing from too much traffic after the episode aired. They didn't get the money, but the publicity went a long way. XCraft was able to get investments from a number of VC firms, including Meyer Equity and Mountain Man Ventures. Their phone drone project also raised over 170,000 through a Kickstarter campaign, despite looking for just 100. The duo went to raise over a million through a crowdfunding campaign on Start Engine. Now XCraft has since launched six other models of drones and is currently valued at a whopping $17 million. The company has expanded its product range and target market, now producing drones not just for recreation but for land surveyors, construction workers, and even the U.S. military and law enforcement. Their drones now operate more on the standard quad propeller design than the plane idea, having gone from a valuation of $6 million at the time of their appearance in the tank to almost triple in less than a decade. It's fair to say that XCraft has been one hell of a successful business so far. So with their investment in Breathometer tanking in the long run, and the Sharks not being able to go through with XCraft, so far we're looking at a zero out of two when all five Sharks invest. How about this last? business. Next up is Maria Curcio and Veronica Perlongo. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Buggy Beds, and it went on the tank before these other two in 2012. It's the first time where all five sharks invested in the same idea. The product is a non-toxic bed bug removal device invented by entrepreneurs Veronica Perlongo and Maria Curcio. Buggy Beds is like a bed bug glue system working in the background simply by sliding under the four corners of your mattress. The device detects the bugs, a tracks them before trapping, and kills them, hence alerting the customers before infestation occurs. Perlongo and Curcio had launched the business only six months before appearing on the show, which is earlier than most businesses. What's even more peculiar is the fact that the founding partners didn't ask to be on the tank but got approached by the producers to make an appearance. Having first refused, the two sat and thought about the possible benefits of the shark's investments and came onto the show. Entering the tank, they introduced themselves, their product, and said that they were looking for $125,000 in return for a 7% equity. Hi, our product is Buggy Beds. 
and we are seeking a $125,000 investment for 7% equity in our company. After throwing the sharks some statistics surrounding bed bug infestation, Barbara Cochran takes a closer look at the portable pack. The ladies explain their ambitions and hopes for this business and then are faced with a series of questions from the sharks. Kevin wanted to know the efficiency of this product. Robert has to know the extent to which the product has been tested. And Barbara's over here inquiring about the accuracy of the data the two provided on the product's function. Functionality. The two founders answered all these questions quite well. It's not toxic in any way. No, I've been... it's non-toxic and pesticide free. So who is actually doing the manufacturing for you? We're actually taking it in-house now 100%. It's very cost-effective and easy. Then they would show the numbers behind the business. Two-pack products cost $1.35 to manufacture, retailing between $6.99 and $8.99. Veronica then reveals that Buggy Beds has made about $150,000 in sales up to that moment. It gets the Sharks even more impressed when they announce Home Depot's plan to launch the product in 60 of their stores across the U.S. Even better, Maria chips in that 100,000 of their current sales have been profit. And for the two, it only gets better from here. The two packs are uh, $6.99 to $8.99. And what is your cost of making it? $1.35. What are your sales right now? Uh, currently, our sales are 150,000. Can I say one other thing? On the 150,000 dollars in sales, we have 100,000 in profit. Nice. When questioned on their valuation at 1.75 million, the lady shocked the sharks by telling them that they had earlier rejected an offer of 5 million for the trademarks and the company's patent. That surprised the sharks, and Kevin calls Maria crazy for turning down such an offer, to which she cheekily replies she's Mrs. Wonderful in business. You're saying the company's valued around 1.75. Why are you valuing the company at that? That's a great question. Before we launched, I was offered $5 million for the trademarks and the patents from a company. Whoa! And you turned that down? Yes. What? Something unusual happens next. The sharks ask the ladies to give them the room. All sharks are able to agree that they should go all in on this business, although Barbara demands a bigger part of the investment for herself. Ladies, ladies, I want you to step outside for me, okay? Okay, boys and girl. We all want part of this deal. The ladies return and the negotiations begin. $250,000 for 25% is Kevin's offer, and he openly invites the other sharks to join in on that deal, which Damon immediately does. Barbara declares herself out after the ladies hesitate to take her one-time $150,000 offer for 15%. Before she changes her mind, you have all five sharks, quarter million dollars. For 25 Never happened, up. ever. Okay, yes can, or no? can we take one minute? No, to, don't, no. Even don't even think about, about, it. think about it. Keeping pretty quiet as the episode's running, Mark surprisingly urges the ladies to agree to a deal that involves all the sharks, particularly with Kevin and Damon offering to get the product into Walmart and 7-Eleven, respectively. Robert immediately agrees, and eventually, Barbara does too. The sharks collectively offer what Kevin initially put on the table, $250,000 for 25%, and the ladies agree to that record-breaking scenario. Almost immediately, the company would take off to new heights. Frankly speaking, Buggy Beds is one of the most successful products to have ever been on this show. By 2016, the company had made $1.2 million in sales, which is like a dozen times their original profit margin of $100,000. You can now find Buggy Beds at about 350 Home Depot locations across the country and at numerous U.S. retailers, from CVS Pharmacy to Lowe's to True Value to Fred Meyer, Harris Teeter, Camping World, Kroger, and Target. You can even find it on Amazon with remarkable reviews. Buggy Beds has also added other products like bed bug luggage liners, sold for about $12.99 on their website. Mosquito repellent brands going for $14.99 for a 12-pack. Mosquito repellent pouches at $29.97 for a 9-pack. Mosquito hairbands at $17.99 for a 9-pack. And mosquito repellent keychains for $4.99 for a 3-pack. The company also has for Free shipping across the U.S. for orders above $25 and international shipping. As of 2023, this company makes a mind-blowing annual revenue of $4 million, estimated to be worth well over $15 million. And you know what? Unless the world somehow finds a permanent solution to get rid of bed bugs, buggy beds will be in business for many years to come. It goes without saying, all the sharks have no regrets about investing in this business.